Why does this book exist? Don't you already have a Spider-Man book? You're quite right. We do have Amazing Spider-Man, and it lives up to its name with an epic story that has been building for several years. So with a certain movie coming out next month and a new animated series later this year, we in the comics world wanted to make sure that newly excited Spider-Fans had a super easy landing pad. Plus, Chip and Adam secretly met one year ago, today in Greenland, and made a blood pact with a pan-dimensional warlock to create a new spider book. That's odd. You're telling me they're freaks! What do you guys have planned? So much. Peter Parker has a sister? What is she doing here? What's up with that Stark phone? And what does it have to do with every single hero in the Marvel Universe? Chip and Adam have so much planned for all of you, and we're super excited to have you on board. In fact, enjoy a special story that will deepen this mystery. Okay. This is MJ. I love Spider-Man and uh, the medium of comic books in general, and right now it's time to talk about the spectacular Spider-Man, or Peter Parker, the spectacular Spider-Man, uh, which is a side story, as you just read, written by Chip Zdarsky and planned by this Adam fellow whose name I didn't really notice in the credits. Uh, anyway, there's a bonus story hinted to at the end of that little exchange uh, called Spider Fight, and it's a fight between Black Widow and Spider-Man. And uh, yeah, I'm going to get into all of that throughout the course of the review. But first, I want to give credit where credit is due. Peter Parker, The Spectacular Spider-Man, which is the side story, is written by Chip Zdarsky. Oh, Adam Kubert is the artist. Jordi Belair is the color artist. So, there you go. And then on uh, Spider-Fight, the next little in insert at the end, it was uh, Zdarsky It's the writer. Uh, pencils and inks were by Goran Parlov, and the color was Nathan Fairbrain. Excuse me. Fair Byron? Never heard that name before. The letterer was uh, Travis Lanham. So... I'll talk about the stories in order, maybe. Um, first, I want to talk about the cover, though. Um, it's an interesting cover. I don't know how often uh, Spider-Man's in this pose. or Yeah. But this feels more like a Superman thing to me, which is fine. He's got mustard on his shirt. So, um, in the beginning uh, of the book, it talks about how he's back to being a friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Uh, of course, in addition to his standard, um, you know, epic tales going on in Amazing Spider-Man, but that, um, you know, one of the things that he's combating besides villain is the dreaded Parker luck, which, uh, I'm not sure I've ever heard that, but then again, I'm newer, newish to the Spider-Man comics after having read a bunch of them like decades ago and then getting back into it because I realized I, I really do love the comics and like I read Amazing Fantasy 15 and I've, uh, previously covered here, uh, Spider-Man Life Story written by Chip Zdarsky and, that's kind of what inspired me to check out um, Chip Zdarsky's other Spider-Man work, especially because I remember uh, your boy Zach, I think back in the day, he was still diversity in comics, reviewing this, and he kind of trashed it, and I think he, anyway, it doesn't matter what he thinks, it matters what I think, and uh, that's what I'm here for. I'm here to read these on my own and uh, assess them for what they really are, in my opinion. Anyway, I enjoyed Spider-Man Life Starters so much that I decided I should check out what else Zdarsky has written because um, I think he gets Spider-Man in a way that I kind of, that gels with me. So, here we go. Uh, first of all, I'll talk about the art. Here's a great little sequence. Um, it's a punchline to a joke that I'm not going to really reference, but I thought it was funny. Um, but this is by uh, Adam Kubert. Um, you know, he did the layout and everything. He's the, the penciler on this one. And I just thought it flowed really well. Um, Johnny Storm looks, I mean, you can tell the passage of time in each shot, uh, the people walking by and stuff and, uh, you know, the way his expression changes and stuff, it all works. And, uh, it just, it really sold it, especially I was looking through it in the guided view and it just went one after the next, after the next, after the next, I thought, oh, that, that, that flows really, really well. Um, the next thing is actually, uh, art from Parlov. Parlov did the little spider fight. You can see Spider-Man's fighting Black Widow, um, it, oh, I guess it is um, Peter's new suit. I couldn't tell though. The coloring on it makes it look like looks more makes it look more like his traditional suit. Um, but I see it going up past his knees. But anyway, um, I'm more focused on like the fact that uh, Parlov I think departs from the more grounded, realistic uh, coloring and backgrounds and stuff that um, uh, Kubert holds throughout the main story. Uh, and I like it. It it pops. It it has a 
you know, a lot of energy and it's, uh, it feels good. Um, and this fight with Black Widow is excellent. Um, it has a lot of energy and motion. Uh, I'm just selecting one. Actually, I have a, well, anyway, um, I, I just, I like how dynamic it is. It changes, uh, every couple seconds. It feels like, um, Black Widow is switching tactics on Spider-Man to, uh, you know, get the jump on him. Uh, we learn that it's actually because, uh, she's trying to develop some, uh, she, she's shield is forcing her to fight him uh to uh <laughs> adapt his danger sense for their technicians through some or through their people or for their operatives through some sort of technology so anyway that's pretty cool back to adam kubert's art in the main story um yeah see it's inked so much differently uh even the lines on spider-man's suit look different um i can't really describe the uh the difference in the lines but if you look at them in comparison you'll know it's like a 45 degree tilted uh like simple grid pattern uh throughout cuberts and it almost seems like the angle is off or something's a little bit different in um in parlops but anyway um <clears throat> i'm probably zoomed in too much uh for you to see the full effect of it but later on as i'm reviewing uh, the rest of the story you'll be able to see I, i'll do like a slow pan over um the cityscape behind him as he's swinging um swinging around uh but w one thing uh well just it, it looks really great so that's what i have to say about that so this thing's definitely a mixed bag uh not so much on the art i'd say the art's pretty consistent throughout pretty high quality um some of peter's posing and, and his body language throws me off a little bit. Like, there's this comedian lady that he saved from robbers, or I don't even know what, but Ant-Man helped out too. Um, and I guess it's uh, Scott Lang. Um, there's just weird stuff. Like, I, I didn't quite understand, uh, like, you know, Scott pops up and he's going to his, well, almost normal size, uh, which is a little comedic bit uh, in the story. And Peter screams, ah, and he grabs onto the, the lady um, he's got his hands on her shoulders and I can't tell if he, I mean, he's not going to make her like a human shield or anything for himself. Um, but it almost looks like he, I don't know, like, is he grabbing her to make sure that she's safe so he can, you know, cover her up and protect her from this thing. But like, did his spider sense go off? I'm pretty sure it didn't. Uh, it wasn't, you know, drawn that it did. So, uh, like it almost just seemed like a random joke to make him, uh, like give him a jump scare. Uh, to be funny, a comedic jump scare, so to speak, and I don't know, it didn't work that well with me, and I don't know how well um, Scott Lang and uh, you know, Spider-Man know each other. I think uh, Peter makes a reference to not knowing this Ant-Man well, um, but like having met him before, and uh, maybe that's why they have the kind of weird relationship they do. Um, like there's even this thing where... Uh, Peter mentions that he's pretty good with tech because Ant-Man isn't able to get to his full size because there's something in his helmet that controls the way he uh, shrinks and grows and something's off with it and Peter offers to help or Spider-Man offers to help and uh, one, Scott laughs, which is fine, but the way he laughs, it felt very fakey and like, uh, I don't know, like disingenuous and um, like he was being forced to laugh and it didn't feel like it was something that flowed naturally out of the character of the story. But then again, I don't know this Scott Lang Ant-Man very well, but it just, it sure felt fake and, uh, I didn't appreciate it. And, uh, it kind of led to an awkward silence, which was fine. Anyway, that ultimately leads them to go visit this guy, um, who is either Mason or the Mason. I, I can't quite remember. Um, but he's a, a tech guy for all the superheroes. And I like the fact that, um, they also mention that a lot of superheroes lately have been needing more advanced tech. Even Tony Stark will go to this guy. So that's a pretty interesting uh, conceit to the story. And uh, he also happens to have a close connection to one of Spider-Man's oldest villains, um, which I'll be interested to see uh, as I'm reviewing the 1962 Spider-Man. Like, does he pop up within the first, you know, 10 or 12 issues? That'll be kind of fun to see. Um, but uh, anyway, overall, the story seems okay. Um, there's some, like, they very much, in the very beginning of it, Peter is telling his origin story to, uh, Johnny Storm, the Human Torch, uh, during a lunch break, and, um, he kind of, 
oh gosh, I don't know, elements of it reminded me of stuff that popped back up in uh, Life Story, like the vignette, the the speed at which things were handled, and the fact that all of like who Peter is today, who Spider-Man is, the hero he is, is deeply rooted in him having lost his parents and being taken care of by Ben and May, and um, I don't know, like the tragedy of him becoming Spider-Man and all that stuff, which is pretty interesting because there's, you know, some pathos to it, but, um, you know... Uh, and Johnny Storm kind of makes fun of me. He's like, why are you telling me this again? Like, you've told me your origin a billion times. And, you know, this is a new comic, which is starting off, um, you know, they already had a Spectacular Spider-Man. They already had a Peter Parker Spider-Man. So now this is Peter Parker colon the Spectacular Spider-Man. Uh, and this book, like I read about from the uh, the letter section, so to speak, or, you know, the metatextual stuff where the, uh, you know, chipper, it said Nick, so I'm guessing is that is that Nick Spencer? I don't know. Is that um, just another... Is that an editor? I, I couldn't tell. I didn't see a, a an editor in the list. Or I didn't see an editor named Nick in the list of credits. And I'm not... Earlier, I didn't see that earlier, and I'm not going to look it up now. So, there you go. Um, but they're kind of addressing, you know, why this is happening. And, um, like, I'm wondering... Uh, like, <laughs> I have a complicated relationship with comics. Um, but I'm kind of in it now. And one reason I'm excited about it is because, like, the Marvel Unlimited app, app uh, I paid, I think, like, 70 bucks for the whole year for, you know, 365 days of comics. I could read as many comics as I want. If I only read one comic a day, that'd be 365. You multiply that by either $1 a pop at the cheapest or, uh, you know, 3 or $4. The It's hundreds of dollars of savings, I think. So, uh, and, you know, the day is long enough to read multiple comics in it if, if I wanted to or had the time. Um so it just makes sense, and uh, I wanted to get into the roots of Spider-Man, because like, I really love this character, and I wanted to see, like, well, how good was the, you know, Ditko and Lee stuff, and, um, like, why has Spider-Man lasted? Spider-Man is so dang popular, I wanted to get into why uh, he's still around. Anyway, kind of detracting from my main point, um, you know, but this is actually going towards my complicated history with comic books. At the root of it, these are, you know, disposable um stories that are, you know, it's okay to throw them away. You don't have to collect them. You don't have to hold on to them. Um, and they're made for different audiences at different times, or rather, uh, the same audience that grows up and leaves them behind, except for certain people like me, I guess. And, um, you know, the fact that there's, you know, jump on point after jump on point is kind of interesting. And, uh, it strikes me as, you know, it's okay for them to do that sort of thing. But uh, each new installation should have merit, and each installation should be able to stand on its own. And I wanted to check out this series, uh, one, because uh, how much I liked Life Story, like I talked about at the top of this, uh, but also to see, like, does this have artistic merit? Um, is it just another cash grab, or is it a worthwhile story? Um, is it something to, to go ahead and check out and invest time and energy in and um i mean with the way the art is with the uh, you know twist about the sister or whatever being in there it seems like it will be telling an interesting story with you know shield trying to adapt the danger sense you know the spider sense um i feel like hanging on for a while anyway i don't know what my schedule is going to be i also want to check out friendly neighborhood spider-man because uh I don't know if this is, no, I'm, I'm going to say this is not a spoiler. Uh, the most recent comic cover, which it's, uh, I don't know, August something, 10th or something, um, of Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man has Mary Jane on the cover put on the Spider-Man suit, and apparently she and Peter are back together, which I had no idea. Uh, again, One More Day is something that I hate the idea of, and the fact that they could be getting back together is very exciting to me, so it's something I want to check out. So I think I might alternate, um, I don't know if I'll alternate, but I definitely want to get into um, Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man as well and check that out. So I don't know, I might balance those two newer books, uh, while I go back and, uh, read the, um, original, you know, Ditko Lee run from 62 and start there. And I don't know what my release schedule is going to be, but it, you can expect at least once a week, maybe twice a week, um, me covering, uh, these different Spider-Man books. And, uh, like I said, I'm going to review them. I'm going to call them as I see them, roast them and toast them as, as, uh, necessary. And, uh, that's pretty much, uh, all I have to say for now. Thanks for sticking with me. Check out mjmunoz.com for more of my work. I talk about tokusatsu and write original fiction you can find there. I am also participating in Tokutember, making tokusatsu-inspired art for the month of September. 
I'm an aspiring author who will gladly accept your financial support through coffee. Swinging Through Comics can be found on YouTube, iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, and mjmunoz.com slash STC. Relevant links are in the show notes. If you had a good time, like and share this. Subscribe and ring that bell to catch me next time I'm Swinging Through Comics.